Um, Stephanie is the chief advisor for federal customer experience at Qual Qualtrics uh, and a former federal customer, uh, chief customer officer. Um, we're going to sit down and talk a little bit more about some of the things that were uh, mentioned this morning, uh, Amira and uh, Barbara, um, around Circular A11, uh, particularly Section 280, uh, and how that's um, transforming kind of the next frontier in government customer experience. Uh, I guess one quick show of hands, I know we did one earlier, but how familiar is everybody with uh, OMB Circular A11? So half of the audience, okay. How many people are familiar with uh, Section 280? and have yes. read that, okay, so like a quarter of the audience. Um, so I guess with that, Stephanie, um, you know, you have a lot of familiarity with uh, this in your past life uh, as a CX lead for a federal government agency. Can you give some context around, a little bit more around uh, Circular A11, uh, Section 280, and how can OMB use this and, and be looked at as a new frontier in government experience? Sure. Um, well, you know, for the past several years, while this fantastic government customer experience community of practice has been developing in government, customer experience practices have still been seen as more of a nice to have rather than something that's a necessity or reality. But with the new Circular A11, Section 280, it moves those practices and principles kind of out of the realms of nice to have and more into the realms of necessity and requirement. And with that, we really are in a new frontier. And who does uh, Section 280 apply to? There are high-impact service provider agencies that are noted on performance.gov. However, in the guidance, when you read it, it's only about six pages. It's chock full of really good information and sentiment. It's noted in the opening lines of the circular that it's intended to be a guideline for all federal government agencies on the executive branch side. And what, can you talk a little bit more about what those requirements are? Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's not about doing a survey and calling it a day. We love surveys at Qualtrics, and we love to talk about surveys, but when you read the guidance, you'll see that it's about embedding the practices and principles of CX as a business discipline throughout the, the fabric of your agency's culture. So while we do like to talk about surveys, and surveys do get a lot of airtime in Circular A11 Section 280, that's not the only thing that it's about, but we can talk a little bit more about those surveys if you want to because they do get a lot of airtime in the circular. Yeah, and we talked, uh, uh, Barbara and Amira talked uh, uh, quite a bit about, you know, the feedback loop and, you know, one of the questions earlier was, you know, the challenge of getting um, feedback from, um, directly from their customers, whether that be a business or citizen or employee. So I if you could talk a little bit, you know, about those best practices, I guess, as they relate to measurement because there's a lot of content in Section 280 and guidance about, you know, measuring performance. Sure. Um, Amira mentioned earlier about the seven domains that are part of OMB Circular A11 Section 280. When you take a look at it from a high level, you'll see three different things. Um, the questions that you should be asking, when you should be asking them, and how you can expect the results to roll up and out to the general public. So we can talk about those three things. In Circular A11, Section 280, you'll see that there are two required questions and a handful of other questions that you can modify. You can ask additional questions as well. You're welcome to do that according to the circular. Now, if you're using the Qualtrics platform, you can look at the in-platform library of questions for inspiration on other questions that may make sense for your organization. The second thing is, when should you be surveying customers? Look at your high impact product lines, your high volume transactions, and look at attaching a survey there. You can also um, incorporate, because of this OMB circular, you can um, do high level annual customer surveys. So it's conceivable that surveys may be done at the program level or at the agency level. Now, where should those survey results be publicized? Of course, you're going to want to do some socialization and democratization of that data internally with your internal audiences. According to the circular, your customer survey scores are going to roll up and out to the general public 
through your agency performance plan and report. And that is really a big part of what makes this the next frontier in government customer experience. This is something new. It is something that, that will be on the public front and agencies will be held accountable um, for, for the results by the public. And is it kind of what's the timeline for that compliance? Well, the, the guidance is pretty clear that there are some agencies that just won't be ready to collect the data that the circular requires. So you have until Q1 of 2021 to pinpoint a time when you will begin collecting that customer feedback. But there are some agencies who may be ready now and may be collecting that data now, and we could see that on performance.gov as early as February or so of 2019, so not long. Excellent. And I guess, you know, achieving compliance with this isn't something that is, you know, one person can do. Uh, we talked about in the last uh, session with Frank and the team that, you know, you have to have kind of the ability to scale up, scale down. Uh, how should government employees think about either, you know, internally as well as partnering with other agencies to try and, you know, meet these requirements of compliance and identify best practices. That's a really good point and an important point too because it's not the kind of work that you can attach to one person's job description and just expect for it to be done. OMB Circular A11 Section 280 is about customer experience as a business discipline. It's about five separate core functions that are expected to be interwoven through the fabric of your agency's culture. So there's some collaboration ahead of you. You're going to want to partner with your strategic planning lead, your performance reporting people, um, your program managers, possibly your chief of staff, in incorporate, incorporating those practices and principles and the performance measures that you will collect through this process. So as far as, you know, where should within agencies you try and go from a leadership perspective to help champion this. So we talked a little bit about, you know, how many agencies actually have chief customer experience officers, uh, you know, federal CXOs, CIOs are, you know, responsible from an IT perspective. Where, where should that champion come from and, and how can normal, um, you know, career employees that are in that process, where can they go for support, do you think? Oh wow, you know, every agency is different. There really are no cookie cutter approaches. Um, some of the best work that's been done has been when the position has been at the senior leadership levels and reported in either through a chief of staff or to the agency head himself or herself. That keeps, that keeps the, uh, the work away from being influenced by any one department within an agency because customers have a relationship and probably have touch points throughout your agency. So uh, keeping it at the head of the agency is where um, a lot of advocacy can get done and provides a lot of air cover in my experience. Excellent. What would you, what would be three takeaways um, from, you know, the uh, section 280 that you would leave that are kind of the most important for the audience? And then, you know, secondly, you know, what's the first step or most important action that they could take is, you know, they go back to their offices and, and tell about everything they learned today and, and trying to actually implement some of these things. So there are three things that are top of mind. Number one, PRA still applies. Um, PRA is still the law. <laughs> it is still the law. It does still apply. Um, if you're familiar with PRA, are you familiar with fast track process, the fast track process for PRA? Well, unfortunately, PR, PRA and the fast track process may not apply in this situation because the reports roll up and out to the general public and public dissemination of results under the fast track process typically are not something that's allowed. So make friends with your PRA liaison. That would be a piece of advice. Uh, make sure you're working with credentialed advisors um, and make sure that your technology products and the products that you use are secure and you're working with folks that understand the, the walk that you're walking and the path that you're on. And um, last thing, read the guidance. It's only about six pages long, um, overarchingly goes into CX as a business discipline. And you can uh, talk to any member of the Qualtrics team as well if you have any other questions or um, just want to brainstorm on how you're going to get the work done. Any, I mean, we have a few more minutes. Does, does anybody have any questions for Stephanie around Section 280 or um, in terms of, you know, what the requirements are or process? Oh, we do have one there in the back. I knew we had a brave soul. 
Yes, I work with um, companies that provide services to the government, so contact center, CX, all those sorts of um, op backroom operations and, and service providers. How is 280 being incorporated into solicitation documents? Is, there a, is the government putting those into its um, RFPs and, and documents for us to see? It could possibly, it could conceivably come up. However, the guidance is only a couple of months old. So I would imagine that agencies are still getting their arms around how it's going to roll out. And it may be different from agency to agency because there are no cookie cutter approaches. But the guidance is pretty good. Um, Circular A11 gets an update about once a year or so. So you can expect this guidance to possibly iterate over time. But the starting point that's in front of agencies now is pretty good. So you, you may conceivably see it in the ways that you describe. Any others? Excellent. Well, thank you very thank you much, so Stephanie. Much. Stephanie, I really appreciate it. Um, please, another round of applause for uh, Stephanie.